now, like here I am at Heroes and Villains on 17th Ave with the real Doug Smode. How are you? I'm good. How are you, dude? I'm good. It was uh, a long weekend we just had there. It was. My voice is still out. <laughs> <laughs> it was loud as hell. Thank you guys for that oh, amazing so much. experience. My body's still coming around, too. <laughs> Did you end up suspending from your face on Sunday? Uh, well, we ended up using face hooks in one of our tricks, oh, our cinder block lifts, and I ended up um, using the face hooks to also pull John off the ground into his suspension. Wow. Yeah. And he was suspended from his arms? Yeah, or yeah, how, he yeah. Had four hooks in his arms. So how do you... Like, how do you prepare, even for your first hanging on your face, how did you prepare yourself for something uh, like that? It took a long time, actually. When I first had seen um, a friend of mine, Andrew S., had done it before me, I fascinated me, and it became like the uh, obsessed gold pinnacle <laughs> of my life. I must hang from my face. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I approached the fellow, uh, Javier Feld, who, from Pain Solutions, who uh, yeah. was the guy who pierced and facilitated that suspension. And I was like, you're going to hang me from my face. And he was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> he, yeah, actually, he actually made me wait I, you know, about three to five years, I think it was. Wow. Um, I had to constantly train my neck. Um, and then when we'd meet up at conventions, he'd make me hang from a sling from my neck. And he'd be like, no, grasshopper, you are not ready. <laughs> <laughs> wow. um, and, you know, it was really frustrating, but it's... It, it's taught necessary. Me, yeah, and it taught me a lot yeah. about patience and, and coming into something so extreme and yeah. how it needs to be approached because um, being the heaviest person in the world to have done it, it there's a <laughs> lot of there's a lot of risk involved, right? Yeah. When, when it comes to just pretty much breaking your neck. <laughs> well, so. and what about the holes too? Like, do you like pull on that? Like, do you put? I know when you're stretching your ears, you can put weights and yeah. stuff to um, prepare those. In any honestly, way? with a lot of suspensions. Uh, yeah, I will kind of like warm up the hooks in a sense, have my friends pull on them, kind of get like the feel into it or slowly ease yourself into yeah. it. But I find that with uh, the two times I've done face suspensions now, um, once I feel the tension is equal on everything, it's just lift me off the ground. Yeah, just do just it. Just do it. And if it's going to hold, it's going to hold. If it's not, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so far, <laughs> it's so far held. It's held, yes. Yeah. Uh, we did actually end up tearing one of my face hooks as loud as hell while we were doing this What? Stunt. No. But uh, it was nothing too severe. Oh it was only goodness. about an inch on the bottom of one hook. So we, we were able to continue with the show, and we just dealt with it after. Have you ever had, like, any, like, bad accidents or anything bad happen throughout no, your years you know of what? doing this? Honestly, not really. Um, you really. There has been, like, some mishaps and stuff like that. Um, you know, suspension doesn't always go exactly as planned. Well, I think it was the second time I hung from my face. One of the hooks on my lower jaw pretty much tore wide open. Wow. Um, but we actually didn't even really notice until we came on the ground because I made them <laughs> pierce through my beard. I was like, I don't want to shave this. <laughs> no. So we learned a lesson about being able to, you know, clearly see things because um, it was a good hole. Uh, but other than things maybe needing to be re-rigged or repositioned, I've never been badly injured doing something where that's not what the end goal was anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you guys do some pretty crazy things. You know, um, how's, uh, how's this area doing for you? It's sore. <laughs> it's permafrost suspension. Is yeah, that that's yours? Our, yeah, well, is, it was kind of a development. Um, there was a bunch of us that kind of came together. Actually, a bunch of us. There was me and Dan <laughs> in the beginning. Um, I brought Dan into the body suspension thing, formed the crew. Uh, we were under a different name at the time and then decided to leave. Uh, and then for a while, we were kind of just like vagrants, bouncing around doing hook stuff with no real name. Uh, and then we decided to kind of pull it together and me, John, and Dan were the original founding members of Permafrost wow. Suspension. Um, and then later on over the years, close people to us who wanted to be involved have become involved. Yeah. Um, we, our crew is rather small. There's only six of us. But, uh, yeah, it's good. What you guys pride yourselves on and what you should pride yourselves on is that you guys are doing everything correctly you're trying to inform people yeah you're yeah to do things you know safely. and that's the thing is uh the community is really really good for that nowadays uh, there's big conventions a lot of them are for fun but some of them are very driven towards education um some of us older practitioners we had to learn a lot of this shit through trial and error yeah. um and there was a lot of error 
<laughs> <laughs> so they could bring it to you guys. Yeah, pretty much, right? So we can kind of the middleman for people who want to do this, and they can have you know a, a minimum standard of safety. You know, like all the rigging equipment that we use, everything like that. It's all rated gear. It's all rock equipment, rock climbing equipment, oh, pulley wow. systems, ropes, plates, okay. things like that. Pretty much the only thing that we use that doesn't have a weight rating on it is the skin. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like we try yeah. to take out all mechanical air as much as possible. Um, and, but like a lot of it, at the other end of things, when it comes to the piercing and stuff like that, it, that all just kind of comes with time and feel, you yeah. know, like you can't, you can teach it to people, but like, if you're going to hop in and just try to learn it yourself, you're going to make some mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you do the piercing here, the piercings here at Heroes and Villains? Yeah, myself and Dan Marshall, yeah. Okay, and so I mean, everything is very high grade, um... If you need a piercing at or a tattoo at all, you come to this place. They have our everything plug. you need. Yeah, it's right there. You come here at Heroes and Villains. You'll get everything you need. Um, no, we do pride ourselves on extreme cleanliness, over-the-top safety when it comes to body piercings, body suspension, anything like that. Um, we don't overlook any steps. You know, we don't cheap out on any of our product or anything no, like that's that. That's important. I think the only thing besides my tongue, everything I've ever gotten has got is out now. Has gotten infected. Oh, something. Yeah. It's really important. You know what I mean? You're putting in that time, and you want something mm-hmm. so bad. And I mean, like you said, with my ears, I can't do anything with them until now. I sew mm-hmm. them up and stuff. It's yeah. really important to do things proper the yeah. first time. Yeah, and quality mm-hmm. comes into play a big time too. Uh-huh. Like the quality of body jewelry. You know, metal's not really meant to be inside of people. So. <laughs> So there's like a, uh, a proper way to, get to put it in you, you know, the medical community has spent a long time creating implant grade standards for a reason, right? Yeah. So there's no reason that body jewelry shouldn't be held to the same standards. So. Goals, um, next big things, do you have anything? Um, I'm currently in process of finishing my face. I just recently had five more implants put around my eye um, and then we're going to do the other side. And once that's done, I might be done with my face. And if you my might mother, be? If my mom's watching this, she's got her <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> How's she, yeah, does your mom, like, is she always supported hey, you My throughout mom this is or? awesome, yeah. Yeah. My mom's always been my biggest supporter. To be very honest, I would not be nearly the person Aww. I am or nearly anywhere in my career where I am without her. Like, at the times that I've totally given up, and she's the one who's been like, why would you give up on this? This is all <laughs> you're going to do with your life, you oh, know? Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, she's a huge supporter of mine. So that's really nice. But I know she's ready for me to be done working <laughs> on my face. <laughs> um, other than that, um, just I, I'll start to uh, work downwards on my body and tattoo work and implants and kind of just keeping everything going. Start from the face down. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I started some other places, but I went pretty heavily on my face <laughs> over the last few years, that's for sure. Well, it looks good. I like your face. Oh, thank you, doll. I like it. Did you do have suspension meets? Is it yeah, once yeah. a month? Yeah, yeah. We hold meets roughly once a month, sometimes twice. We're actually, Calgary's a very busy city for people who like to try body suspension. Yes, I do. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can come in contact with us. There's obviously the uh, Heroes and Villains pages, Facebook and Instagram. Asteroid M, Facebook and Instagram, and Permafrost Suspensions, Facebook and Instagram. And anyone who's interested in body suspension can just message us through the page, and we'll take care of the consult process and then hook them up with their spot. Oh, uh-huh. and people can. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Um, and people can, like, even if they're not ready to go up, they can come and watch. Yeah, the, the, the public meets are open. Right? So as long as you're respectful, mm-hmm. um, you're more than welcome to come and watch. We do have people come all the time who have no interest at all in trying it. They've just been they very curious. And, they, and it's really funny because a lot of those people show up with the mentality of, I just want to see it. I'll never try it. And a few months later, <laughs> we're going getting on. a message from them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Well, thank you so much for being out there and allowing people to have that experience. Cause, I mean, My pleasure. They've, there's probably not a lot of places in Canada, I would assume that. They're, they're, you know what, That's the Canadian crews have really grown over yeah. the years. Yeah, like it's still few and far between, but there's, you know, at one point when there was one or two, you know, now there's mm-hmm. a small handful. Oh, that's so, good. Yeah. So people can get out yeah, there. the community is definitely growing. Oh, look at that. That's good. Well, thank you for sitting with me. No worries, though. I love you. Love you too. <laughs>